Welcome to The Rutledge Perspective. I'm your host, Laurel Rutledge, and this is the place where we talk about those things that are top of mind as you navigate your career, whether that's corporate or otherwise. In my nearly 30 years of experience, half of that in HR, I have seen and heard a number of triumphs as well as a number of failures. And I've experienced them myself, which is what led me here. A place where you can come to know that you are not crazy. There's actually a way to change your perspective so that you can change your circumstances. Welcome to the village. On this week's episode of The Rutledge Perspective, we are gonna be talking about good and necessary trouble. For those of you that have been paying attention, we lost Representative John Lewis in the last couple of days, and he was a civil rights icon and talked often about being beaten and being arrested and how that was a turning point for him in his decision to begin to really fight the good fight to cause good and necessary trouble. And over the last several months, just like many of you, we've experienced a big upheaval in our country. And I, as well as others, have really been in kind of a crazy place. And for those of you who've been following me, I'm a glass half full kind of girl. I figure, you know, I'd rather live my life that way. Yes, things are tough and we need to be honest about who we are. We need to be honest and aware of our own weaknesses and our own pitfalls, but we also have to have the courage to speak truth to power and to move forward because I believe that everything is possible and anything is possible, but you have to understand what anything and everything mean to you. And so being in that darker place over the last month or so has been a trial. And, and as we speak truth here and authentic here, it's just inauthentic for me to not be honest with you about that. And so this weekend, as I found out about the passing of John Lewis and I started looking at some of his quotes and the things that he did, and I started thinking about all of the things that I want to bring to all of you in terms of changing your perspective can really change your circumstances, about understanding that if you have a strategy and if you understand people, whether or not you're managing your career or you're managing a business, if you know those things, those can help you catapult forward. Because how do you know who you need on your team if you don't know where you're going? Those things are really important. And we've also talked about how you show up and when you show up and speaking into your own power and your own worth and your own purpose so that you are moving forward and not sheltering and harboring and carrying the burdens of everyone around you because you have a challenge saying no, or you have a challenge saying, you know, that's just not mine to own. Well, this weekend, as I thought about Representative Lewis and all of the people that he surrounded himself with, and I thought about all of you and how we move forward and how we make these things happen, how we make our careers happen and how we stay positive and keep our perspective one that is forward moving, even if those forward steps are baby steps. I thought, you know, he was talking about not being afraid to make good trouble or make necessary trouble in the context of these big issues. But it's also applicable to your career and in particular to corporate America. And especially if you are a black woman in corporate America, we know that battle every single day. That decision about whether or not you're going to make trouble that day. Because unfortunately, whether or not you feel like you're making trouble, depending on tone and attitude and which way your head may be leaning, someone else may decide that you're creating trouble that day. Well, I'm going to give you something today that I think is really important and hopefully it works for you. I would argue that you want to make the decision, a purposeful decision to make some good trouble, to make some necessary trouble because everything stays the same unless something changes. Now, that trouble you decide to make, I would also encourage you to make a plan. You've heard me say proper prior planning prevents poor performance. You want to have a plan. 
And more than any other way, when you're ready to make some trouble, you really want to have a plan about making trouble because otherwise you're just sitting in your emotions, you're sitting in your feelings and there may be some unintended outcomes that you're not prepared for. But if you can make a plan about the trouble you're intending to make, no matter what the consequences are of that, you are more likely to be prepared and more likely to know what you're going to do then because then the ball is back in your court. So as you think about what trouble you're gonna make, this good and necessary trouble, I would say these things to you. One, good and necessary trouble is often about speaking truth to power. It is often about calling out those things that others are afraid to. Others see, but they're afraid to say because they are so deeply buried in the DNA of the organization or of the department or of the culture that speaking to it or calling it out or even just recognizing it publicly can be detrimental or harmful or worse can really be career ending if not just career limiting. So understand that your desire or your willingness to cause good trouble or necessary trouble puts you right up against those things that may be sacred cows. Two, it's still important to call out and make that good trouble and that necessary trouble. Because again, nothing changes if nothing changes. And it doesn't mean that you forget about the processes of being respectful and you, you just call things out just because you're irritated that day. That's not what is helpful. What is helpful is that you still have the courage and the desire to say something, that it is still important enough, if not to you personally, but to the team you have, to the colleagues you have, to those who are looking up to you and looking to you for guidance and support, that they see you're willing to step up and step out because all it takes sometimes is one person willing to call it out for others to say, you know what, I saw that too and I'm in agreement. Or that happened to me too, and this is how that impacted me. One voice sometimes in the darkness can be the voice that starts a movement. And then third, when it comes to that plan, understand as part of your planning, what you're really going after. What is your ultimate outcome? If your ultimate outcome is just to call it out so everybody sees it because everybody needs to know it, that's a little short-sighted and a little narrow. And it may prevent you from calling it out in a way that is constructive and could actually lead to change. That planning of how you're going to address something enables you to one, understand who you're addressing and what some of the dangers and some of the pitfalls may be around that. Two, the real details of the issue. And three, it enables you to get all your data ready. Here's the actual behavior I saw. Here was the impact of that behavior as supported by fact, whether that's results from customers, results from employees, engagement surveys, whatever it is, turnover. Here's the data that shows that this is a problem. And oh, by the way, here was the impact to me personally. And no, you can't negate what my experience was and how it impacted me because it is my experience. But you can't do those things and say those things and be ready to have that conversation if you haven't prepared. Because it's easy for us to get in our emotions and get in our feelings. And it's easy for others to dismiss us when we're emotional. Because especially in a corporate setting, people don't want to deal with emotions. They just don't. Oh, she's crying again. Oh, she's yelling again. Oh, she's upset again. And it's easy for people to put on you their discomfort and dismiss the details of your argument because they're surrounded in all of this emotion that has nothing to do with the argument at hand, but may be real and raw, but it's covering up the real issue you want to address. So I encourage you as you are going through this week, as you are thinking through what are the things you are facing, as we see so much of this turmoil continue, as we see so many times and so many situations where we have the chance to speak up. What are you doing and what are you willing to stand on? Are you willing to set your fear aside 
to be able to create good and necessary trouble. I just read about a family this weekend that saw three, what appeared to be late teenage, early twenties, young African-American men pulled over on the side of the road by police officers. And this family was pulling up on the highway. They actually pulled off, turned around and came back up to sit behind the car. The officers came up to them and said, are you family? They said, no. And they were recording. And they said, well, is there something that's going on? They said, no, we just want to make sure that everything's okay. And the officer left them and eventually the boys were fine and they followed them to a gas station and, and had a conversation with these young men who were quite rattled and quite shaken and, and didn't understand, at least from their side of the story, why they'd been stopped. And the moral of that story was for these people who didn't know them, weren't involved in the situation, could very easily have escalated the situation or had it escalated simply because of their presence. They decided in that moment, it was time to make some good and necessary trouble. It was time to show up and say, we're watching. To show up and say, it is important to us as individuals that this situation be a situation where simply the color of these young men's skin does not potentially move this to something that could be tragic. So that same kind of willingness to make good and necessary trouble is critical to your success. It's critical as a servant leader to the success of others because that making good and necessary trouble also means calling yourself out or understanding when someone else calls you out because of something you weren't even aware of. Good and necessary trouble is about making all of us more aware, all of us thinking about the other person and the impact of our language, of our actions, of our engagement on the other people around us. Because contrary to what we're seeing, we are all impacting everyone else. We are all connected. And if there's no better sign of that than COVID, I don't know what is. Because you can be in the same room with people and catch it because we are all interconnected. But even more than that, as we see the isolation and the impact of isolation, as we see the impact of people not being able to see their families, of elderly folks in nursing homes or in assisted living facilities who don't have that same connection. Never has it been more evident how interconnected we are, how our behaviors impact those around us, how our, how our words and our emotions impact everyone else with whom we come in contact, good and bad. And so I would encourage you, as I did this weekend, to think about good and necessary trouble a little bit differently. Yes, we need to be creating and being willing to make good and necessary trouble on these big systemic issues, whether that's gender, whether that's race, whether that's equity around healthcare, whether that's children, whatever the issue is, we need to be willing to make good and necessary trouble if we're going to make change. And we need to be willing to make good and necessary trouble as leaders, as those who are put in positions to serve customers, to serve employees, to serve businesses and to serve stakeholders even and shareholders. If you don't change something, nothing will change. So we can't sit as leaders and expect just because we want it to happen that it's going to. We have to be willing to take a chance, to do it afraid, to step out, even if that means we are stepping out on that limb alone for that thing that we know to be true, that thing that we know to be right. And we do so with the utmost respect, with the utmost calm, with the utmost pointed data that we can and then we make decisions and are prepared behind that. And if that preparation means that we have to make a decision to leave, so be it. If that preparation means we have now impacted change or we've impacted one person and their ability to stay or their ability to do something different, or we've removed the veil, we have opened someone's eyes to the possibilities. That is good change. That is good trouble. That is necessary trouble. And that's the Rutledge Perspective this week. 
something that was just sitting on my heart and I hope it resonated with you. And I encourage you to go out, whether you are building your own business, where you are trying to climb the corporate ladder, whether you are just trying to make it through today and make some good and necessary trouble. Come at it from a place of good faith and integrity and authenticity, but nothing changes if nothing changes. And we all have the power to change. Go out and make it a great week. I really appreciate your tuning in to The Rutledge Perspective, whether you're watching the video or listening to this podcast. And I'll catch you on the other side. Take care. You've been watching The Rutledge Perspective. Thank you for tuning in. If we have given you a different perspective or if you've learned something new that you hadn't thought about before, please subscribe to The Rutledge Perspective podcast where you get your favorite podcasts. And give us a like on iTunes or Google Play or Stitcher. We really appreciate it. And your feedback is important as well as we use that to inform our next episodes. You can also head over to my website, laurelrutledge.com, and download a freebie called Where's My Mojo that can really help you get out of your rut or maybe talk you back off that ledge of frustration. You can also find previous episodes of The Rutledge Perspective on laurelrutledge.com. I really appreciate your tuning in. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.